Hello, welcome to Pittsburgh Tech Talk. Uh, today we have a great show. We're talking to John Shanahan, very interesting young entrepreneur making his way around Pittsburgh. He's involved in a, a new boating ice cream boat uh, business that's going to be pretty interesting, I think. Uh, his family, two different entrepreneurial families, kind of came together to make him. Uh, so it'll be very exciting. We're going to talk about a lot of the food truck industry and what's happening in that world. Um, a lot of the, the kind of uh, hospitality industry around Pittsburgh and how things are changing and how companies like his family are, are kind of helping facilitate these, these new technologies. So it's going to be a great show. Thanks again for tuning in and welcome to Pittsburgh Tech Talk. One, two, three, four, get my shoes on out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing five, ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out, I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening. And together make a beautiful life. And if you want to see, then come along with All right, we have John Shanahan in the studio today. I'm pretty pumped about this. We've been chatting a lot behind the scenes uh, on our live feed. Very interesting stuff, everything from ice cream to boats to solar panels and, and everything in between. So without further ado, John, why don't you uh, introduce yourself a little bit and we'll go from there. Absolutely. Uh, Pittsburgh native, long time from the Baldwin Whitehall area. Actually, Phil and I went to the same high school, which we just learned, narrowly missed each other. Just almost a decade. Yeah. <laughs> Not close. Very close. Uh, I really started out, you know, my entrepreneurial spirit comes from my, both sides of my grandparents. Um, you know, my mom's side started Sugar and Spice Ice Cream, 1984, so we're over 30 years now in business. Which I used to attend a lot. Yeah. I was a big fan. I, I don't remember what I would get there, but I think root beer float would probably be my default. Mm, root beer floats, yeah. That or um, we used to make our own vanilla Coke, because we'd take the vanilla syrup the Coca-Cola, mix it up, and then throw some ice cream in there. Oh, very the cool. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, so sugar and spice, and then on my dad's side of the family had a uh, transportation company. So both uh, started their own business, so my blood always flows with always wanting to find out new things, build things, and uh, very cool. So and now you're involved in the food truck industry. Yeah. And then another little secret industry we're going to jump into, but why don't you describe the food truck yeah, so uh, 30 years now with Sugar and Spice at the 51 location. And then last year, uh, my uncle Kevin kind of went out and we got a truck. We started to go to these private events where you see a lot of food truck roundups, uh, catering events at businesses and other places. And uh, last year, they were a lot busier than they anticipated to be. So uh, great first year on the road. And then he picked up a houseboat in the middle of the summer and decided we would be the first food boat on the three rivers for I love that idea you know pirates games Steelers games kayakers when you're out on the water uh, they'll be docked in the south side marina so we'll be stationed there you can catch where them I by. live yeah it's like you guys are following me around wherever I go like I'm the trendsetter and you guys are just yeah we went Baldwin Phil. south side yeah. uh, we'll be over in the you know the point park where we can wherever we can okay. kind of set up where it's safe to hand ice cream mm -hmm. uh, that's where they'd like to go and um yeah, so down by the Hoffer House is going to be kind of the main place where, oh. where we'll be stationed because there's the big marina right down there. Yeah, you know? I love that. I ride my bike on the trail, so very familiar with yeah. it. So and are actually, you going to actually be working on this boat at all? Uh, I don't know how much I'll be down there working, but I'll come down for some ice cream and uh, I'll okay. make sure that uh, we get the word out. I know there's um, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and the, the Trib has, has covered what we're doing. And uh, you can follow it on Facebook on the Sugar and Spice boat as we build. We're finishing the build now. Uh, my Uncle Kevin has spent the, uh, the winter kind of, we, he gutted it, he took all the walls and the floors out and has just rebuilt this boat now to be an ice cream and a food truck. Yeah, Very cool. Yeah. So can people like get on the boat or? We're not going to let, that's it's a little bit of a safety hazard thing. Okay. So we don't want people to go from, you know, dock to boat and everything else. But okay. uh, we'll be handing out plenty of, plenty of uh, access to, to handing. You know, that's exciting. Like everything. you said, this is the first food. Maybe the ice cream industry is always innovating. Because if you think of it, the first food truck really is the ice cream truck. Yeah. Really? Definitely. And they so, got the song. Everyone knows yeah. the song. And then so, uh, man, I just made that connection there. So mm -hmm. it's like, and now boats. So maybe in 20, 30 years, everyone's just going to use boats instead of uh, trucks. Well, I mean, Pittsburgh was built around the rivers. And yeah. so now we're going to bring the food industry over there. We hope that us being on the river gets, you know, if we had 
fish tacos right from the river. You can come get, uh, you know, fish or uh, if the Southside barbecue guys want to get out on the river, I mean, if we can get this kind of moving, then, uh, you know, people take the Gateway Clipper from different parts of the city mm -hmm. over to get to the game. And so uh, we've got to util utilize these rivers. Yeah. So will you actually stop, like, the Gateway Clipper and, like, throw ice cream? <laughs> Have you talked to them at all, like, how you're going to handle uh, that? No, I don't know if we, if we want to necessarily get into... Uh, Food piracy, food vandalism, yeah, you know, on the rivers. But uh, hey, if we're if we can stop over at the Gateway Clipper and, and be buddies with them, I mean, we'll serve anywhere. Get some we selfie can. sticks that you can like hand up. Yeah, and yeah, sell some ice cream. You need like those claws. You get it like Advance Auto Parts, and you just yeah. kind of hand it around. I know. think this is a great idea. I think I'm really helping you evolve your business model here, which I'm excited about. Yeah. So. You've been involved outside of the food industry. You've been involved like doing marketing for like Edgar Snyder. Mm -hmm. The guy, he has a big ponytail, right? Uh, little known fact is when he wears that leather jacket, he's tucking it back into the leather jacket. You heard it here. Yeah. And we can cite this and put it on Wikipedia. <laughs> If we want to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I worked for Edgar Snyder for a year in the social media. Okay. And so, uh, you know, Twitter and Facebook, a lot of YouTube content. Um, actually, some of the stuff that I did is, is still up there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, some of the ads. And actually, um, No Fee TV, which was the public access TV show, we worked on that for a while, too. Oh, yeah. competitor to PC TV here on this public They're access? They're on PCNC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we'll have to talk to Carl about that. I don't know yeah. if we, we have to beat I'm a rogue that out, agent. maybe. I'm a rogue agent. Okay. No, well, they're not on air anymore. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll let it go. Yeah. We'll talk bad about them. And... Yeah, this was 2013, so oh, it's, wow. it's in the past. So long ago. So long ago. I can't believe it. Yeah. So so what are you going to do to help your, your family's brand? So you're, you're kind of both, you're involved. You haven't started your own thing yet. Your, your family, you have two, you come two sets of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. What's the next thing for John? Well, that's what I'm, I'm excited about now, especially as you were talking about the event coming up for um, what was Create Pittsburgh? Create Pittsburgh. Create Pittsburgh. I mean, uh, I've always kind of had a um, an interest in what's going on nationally. I mean, you look at Silicon Valley and, and things going on in Austin and New York, but uh, I mean, we live in this hub right now for, you know, you get things coming out of CMU, you've got companies like Four Moms that are, I mean, I've got, I've had every Four Moms product, if you didn't know. The only one I don't have is the stroller. So, okay. Four Moms, if you want to make a deal, I'm looking for a. <laughs> I need, a, I need a double stroller, though. All right, yeah. free advertising right yes. there for four moms. Um, but you got four moms. You've got, uh, I mean, you've got these companies, robotics companies, and it's just amazing what's going on in the city. And you've got companies like iFlow, right? I mean, you've yeah. got entrepreneurs that are just starting these companies all over the place, and you don't have to be in San Francisco or in New York to, to really build a, a really cool business on the web. And so kind of getting involved and meeting you. And uh, I know Chris Evans. I worked with him. Actually, when I worked at Apple, you know, worked with the business team. Yeah, you watched. Uh, he was on the show. You yes, saw, yes. You saw him on there. Me and Chris have been doing business for, I don't know, 15 years, which is amazing. Just we're two guys that are very entrenched in this tech tech culture, tech world. And yeah. um, I used to be more heavily in the sales. I don't really like doing sales anymore. He, that's his world. He lives by it. He's still out there hustling and grinding. Um, but yeah, it's, there's, you're, you're, I think you're starting to meet the old timer, which mm -hmm. is like mid thirties, late thirties guys. Yeah. But I think you're doing it the right way. You Seasoned. reached out to me. Yeah. yeah. And that's how you kind of got on here. It was kind of like a last minute. Like, oh, this guy sounds impressive. He seems mm -hmm. professional. Didn't know I was a decade older than you. You're making me look terrible. But um, we'll just Photoshop just the crow's feet. It's just a number. It, I guess you're right. I don't even think of it anymore. But when I go to these groups and I realize I am a decade older and they bring it up, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh man, yeah, I guess I'm not a young entrepreneur or startup guy anymore. I have to like take that pill and realize I am the upper middle age. Well, see, we have both sides of the coin. I work a lot with retailers and I mm -hmm. talk to the C-level and they're all 50s and 60s and yeah. they look at me and they're like, this young guy in here? And so yeah. we're always battling it. You can't I, win. I think it's a lot better now though. When I started my company, there was no such thing as like young tech gurus. We didn't have yeah. Zuckerbergs or and we had Bill Gates, we had Steve Jobs. We didn't have young But even then they were probably in their forties, right? Yeah, but I was then I was in my teens right. and early twenties, so it was very hard to get respect. Um, so things have changed a lot for I, I think it's a lot better for entrepreneurs now because people really respect that young drive and hustle and see what can happen. Because mm -hmm. now I mean, this is before there was even I had a Nokia phone back then. You know, I played Snake was my only app. Right. Um, so now there's so much going on. People and they see young people creating these ten million, twenty million dollar companies in a year or two. I think that these older guys are gonna, as long as you present yourself correctly, I think they're willing to give you some slack. Oh yeah, yeah. But not everybody can pull the hoodie off like Zuckerberg does. Uh, you should. I, 
I never get dressed up for meetings, and um, I think it's respectable when you do that. I think they, when you don't try to go overboard, when you don't try to dress up, that's when you get the respect, as long as you have the content to back it up. If you, mm -hmm. have, if you have something that you're pushing and you're confident, you can literally go in wearing whatever you want, and I, yeah. I feel people are going to respect that. I used to wear ties every day at Edgar Steiner. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I haven't I worn a tie in a while though. But yeah, yeah. Well, you're wearing a, a button up. You're, you're dressed very well today. Yeah, it's very fashion forward of you. Yeah, I, I appreciate like that. Absolutely. It'll get more viewers on, on the show. I'm sure when they see the little thumbnail. So, what are you excited about Pittsburgh? So you're you're involved in the the food scene. You're involved in the boat scene. You're involved in the sweet sugar and spices scene. Yeah. What are you excited about in Pittsburgh? Uh, well, not only you know, the food trucks and the restaurants. I mean, if you read, you know, even New York Times is saying that Pittsburgh is this food hub right now. I think um, you had mentioned there's like 17 restaurants opening in the next two months. I might have made up that number, but that's what, in my head, There's a large amount of restaurants we'll opening in the next few months. I mean, if you look at, I mean, Lawrenceville has totally transformed in the last 10 years. The, the city, when I worked in downtown, I worked in the Steel Tower in 2013, and there were some restaurants you can go to. I mean, you had Bluebird Kitchen had just opened or NOLA in Market District, but now, you go down there and you've got um, meat and potatoes was new at that point. Amazing and, place. Yeah, and uh, Siena Mercado and Amazing. all of these places are just kind of popping up in the cultural district and uh, that's exciting in itself. But then also, uh, like my company First Insight is we're, we're bringing technology, you know, Silicon Valley-like into Pittsburgh. Like you've got Snap Retail and you've got um, no weight and you've got jazz and you've got mm -hmm. all these companies and show clicks and it's like all these companies that are um, doing great things nationally bring that name back to Pittsburgh and so just kind of you know technology companies and kind of this um, this marriage of having both technology and you know customers and, and business and that type of thing is just really exciting you know so you got food you got technology you got robotics you got baby gear I mean it's, we've got <laughs> you everything. love four moms this is like, I do, like four moms. do you have a four moms t-shirt or do you have like no. an advisor out there that's like no but I'm a sucker for really good design I mean okay. that's why you like that's why people like Apple products that's mm -hmm. why you know four moms is a robotics company that is making baby products and then mm -hmm. uh, you know it's it's just that that marriage of the two things you know, so, like you said with uh, with the event coming up it's got arts and technology and probably music mm -hmm. right you got all those things coming together uh, you know Pittsburgh Marathon had bands at every few yeah. miles it's just like it's it's a really cool time to be to be here and I think Peduto also plays a large part I mean definitely love myself some Peduto very yeah. cool guy we had him on the show a few weeks ago it was amazing um, but I think he's really helping push that. I think our, the old Pittsburgh used to be very conservative. It was hard to let any of this stuff happen. And I feel Bill's kind of a driving force behind a lot of this stuff. He's a very yeah. liberal, cool kind of... Well, he's been very open to the changes in the food truck laws because, I mean, uh, James Rich of the taco truck has been very open about how unfriendly those laws were for a while. And mm -hmm. Bill was very open to hearing that and kind of making some of those changes. And... Uh, you know, things are changing now and they're ever evolving very quickly and, and Bill has, has definitely acknowledged, you know, we need to change some things to make sure that we do foster this innovation because you can get all the smartest people in the world in the same place, but if you've got bureaucracy holding them down, there's only yeah. so much they can do. Yeah, and that, that is an issue that I think we're always going to face here and it's an older town, but, but there seems to be a lot of drive towards that and I just don't see us going back. I, I think you're a little younger, you didn't see how bad it was no. even 10 years ago. It was really bad, and I feel in the last five years it has just completely changed. But I mean, it's almost non-recognizable the tech scene in the last ten years in Pittsburgh. There's a few big companies, and now it's there's just a million small companies, and everyone's working together, and it's mm -hmm. it's a very great vibe. And uh, that's why we're starting shows like this to try to talk to everybody and see who's working their way up. And then you know maybe in ten years you're going to be having a show on here. I'll hand the torch. Yeah. You could be interviewing young upstarts about boats and ice creams. and When I'm a decade older, yeah. There you go. You never know. You never know what you'll be. Maybe you'll be the next Jazz. You'll be the next uh, Don, Don Charlton. That's right. You never know. Yeah. So what do you want? We have a few minutes left here. What do you want to talk about? Do you want us to, what do you want to pitch? Do you want people, do you want to talk about your ice cream? Do you want to talk about followers? Do you want to talk about, how can, how, what do you want to tell the viewers here? Uh, I think you need to support the, the industries that are booming in Pittsburgh. So support the food industry, 
try new restaurants. Don't go to Denny's all the time just because um, yeah. you know, you're used to it and you're comfortable with it. Um, try a new pizza place. There's a new pizza place that opened uh, in Brentwood that does, my wife is gluten-free, they do gluten-free. Oh, nice. And so that's huge because the only place we could go before was Domino's actually. Domino's is gluten-free pizza. But, it's uh, just terrible food. Which is, I mean, they're, it's very highly engineered, so <laughs> yeah. it tastes okay. You know? yeah. um, but you know, that's entrepreneurship in itself. That's a person who said, I want to make pizza, I want to start a pizza shop. And so supporting those types of of things is, is very important. Same thing with the food trucks. Um, I know uh, Pittsburgh Po' Boy, he started out in the Pittsburgh Public Market. Unfortunately, Pittsburgh Public Market closed. Well, and well, yeah. it, that left people without things, bad marketing. places to be. It was bad marketing on that was, part. I know, I went in no there and I was it. like, I couldn't believe, I found. I only went down there the first time about a month before it closed. And I'm like, I can't believe this has been here. And yep. I didn't have any idea. That I tried talking with them. Yeah. Free advice, pro bono, do X, Y, and Z, and you'll be way more successful, but you can lead a horse to water. Yeah. But hey, John, I appreciate coming on the show. Very excited. I'm going to be watching your career here. We're going to be connecting via social media. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, four moms doesn't give you like some kind of advertising contract or something like no, that. No, come buy ice on. cream. I, don't, I, mean, I can buy my own four mom stuff. I right. want you to support the, the ice cream industry. All right, fair enough. Well, thanks, John. Thanks Absolutely. for being on the show. One, two,